to get from this side of Zion National Park to the other side, you do have to go down through a tunnel. If your rig is over uh, this height and width, then you do have to get a special permit to go through the tunnel. And the tunnel is only open uh, from 8 a.m. till 7 p.m. to go through with that permit. Hi everyone, welcome to Tigner Adventures. We are at Zion National Park. Yay! Yay, we have been here a lot um, over the years. This is one of the big five national parks that is located in uh, Utah. And it's probably, let's see, let me think. Yep, it's the most popular <laughs> park. Uh, it's a very, it's an international uh, wonderland. Everyone, I mean, I, it's hard to find people here that usually speak English, actually. Um, it's kind of surprising because there are so many visitors and that's because it's so popular. Uh, they have buses coming in constantly from uh, Las Vegas. Uh, it's just, everyone wants to see it. It is pretty cool. To start with, we're just gonna kinda go our drive into the park, down to the visitor center, our walk through the visitor center, and then um, as we're leaving, we're actually going to stop at an overlook and overlook the park from up above. So does that kinda cover it all? Yes, and it doesn't matter how many times you come, it's still spectacular. It's a beautiful spring day, it's perfect weather. Perfect You're weather. Happy. Look at the mountain behind us. I mean, just yeah. that little picture right there. But there's tons yeah. of views of pictures here yeah. in the park. We're not taking the shuttle system up to the top of the One Canyon. Yeah. We have done that. We've done hikes up the Narrows. We've gone everywhere here in Zion. We've done a lot of canyoneering. Uh, we've gone into places back in the back country here where very few people ever go. And so I used to take young women and young men group step back through there. And I just tell them that I'd say, you know, you're standing right here looking at uh, across the canyon to the road, for example. Nobody even knows that you're here and nobody else has ever seen what you have just seen because there's just so much design. If you look at the map here, you can see the road just goes through a little bit of a tip of Zion and that's all that most people see. But there is a lot to it. This is the exit to Keyhole. You can see the water's running and there are some canyoneers coming out. It's popular because it's a short canyon and it's always wet, so you definitely always want to wear a wetsuit, or at least it's recommended, even in the hottest summers. There's a number of tunnels that as you go through Zion that you have to go through. These first couple tunnels have been ground out so that large vehicles can get through them with no issues. Vehicle 
and they blocked the traffic so only one vehicle, one lane of traffic at a time can go through. We're going to go through the tunnel down to the visitor center and then on the way back we'll stop at the top right there and hike out to the overlook and just give you a better look overlooking Zion. So when they built this tunnel they started at both ends and went and met in the middle. And the little windows that you hear you see on the side they opened up to allow air to circulate in the tunnel. So when you go down through this tunnel with a big rig, you have to go down the center of the tunnel. And what's sad is there's a number of places you'll see where the walls have been scraped, where somebody didn't stay in the center very well and did some damage to their rig. Sometimes it can take a long time to get through the tunnel. from the lower end. This is outside of that is Springdale, a little town in Springdale. And this is the side that's towards St. George. We come up from there and straight into the park. And now we're going into the visitor center. 
So Zion National Park is one of the busiest national parks and a lot of times the parking fills up here at the, the center but you can always park in town. There's shuttle buses that take you through town and depending on the time of day that you come you can see there's tons of openings here in the afternoon. You just have to come in when other people when it's not the popular time like first thing in the morning. Uh, so just plan ahead and you can if you can schedule your day to be where you're going to come and camp in the area then you can come in the afternoons you'll always find a place so you should never not come to Zion thinking that it's too busy I've heard people say don't go to Zion National Park anymore right now it's just really super busy and you won't have fun that is not true you can always get in here they have it set up very well and you can always find either parking here or in town and you can park just outside the park too and just walk in if you want so don't ever let that stop you it's a fun place we enjoy being at Zion and we have been here a lot so we have arrived at the information center and so here is an example of Zion and it actually has all the numbers of different uh, areas of the park. Uh, this particular one right here in front of us is where the switchbacks are that went up through the mountain. And then if it keeps going up there above four, you'll see another line back up there. That's how far the tunnel went. And it comes down, we drove down through here towards the visitor center. But this other side going up this canyon is the one that the shuttle buses take you up. This is the information desk. So you can find out any hike about any hike or anything you want about in Zion. Over here is the backcountry desk. Uh, this is uh, if you want to get a permit to go anywhere, uh, do canyoneering backpacking or anything like that you do have to sit down and watch a couple videos on wilderness uh, how to protect yourself and also how to leave no trace is one of the real big ones so you learn that and then once you sign off on that you get your permit this section here is very important when you're doing backcountry wilderness type stuff this uh, is the weather that's in the park and they always have this listed here and they'll have a flash flood warning or you know, there's three different stages, but the saying right now, it's always possible. There's so much runoff that uh, there's just a potential of having a flash flood in these canyons. They're slot canyons, so they're very narrow, so you just got to be very careful. Uh, and the monsoon seasons are really bad, but all that information will be listed up here on this board. This is only one place that you check. You need to also talk to the rangers and make sure you check things just before you enter the canyon. This wall is the popular hikes and walks that are actually in Zion. We've done all of these. They're very good. And then over here is the bookstore. Nainette's looking for the passport station. We have one of these passport books and so we have to get our stamp every time we visit a park. And every park will have several different stamps that you can get. Nanette went to find some paper because we didn't bring our book with us. She's got several pieces of paper she's going to stamp. Like the date one. <laughs> Let's see our stamp. April 26th. April 22nd. 2023. Cool. So this is the bus station area. Come here to catch the buses or get dropped off and they run quite frequently. So we are parked just here at the top of the tunnel and if we walk over this way, if we were a canyoneer, this is called uh, Pine Creek Canyon and this is where you would drop in to go down this canyon. In this case, the water's running. This is the Canyon Overlook Trail that we're going to go on. It's a mile round trip, and this is where it actually starts going up the canyon. 
All right, we are going directly into the sun. And you can see we have a little ways to go up still, if you can see in the sun. All right, so when the camp tunnel next to the mountain or make the path there, we just build one on the side. <laughs> so, look at this. This is pretty cool. Actually, it is cool. <laughs> See all the water seeping out around the edges there? Makes this nice and cool in here during the summer. Make sure you watch your step as we go around here. Hate to fall down that. That would be a slip and slide. All right, we have made it up onto the top. Just kind of skirting along the top here, and if you look right here, if I can get the camera to go up there, there's a big beehive. They call those hoodoos. Anyway, if you hike straight up this, right through that saddle up there, that drops into another canyon called Ledge Canyon. We've done that one time. That was not one of Ninette's popular ones. She was not a happy lady hiking up the side of that because if you slipped, you would just slide down the canyon back down to the trail here and she wasn't too excited about that. So, but uh, one of my friends dropped a rope to her and, and made her a lot more comfortable. So I guess I should have thought of that. Whoops. We can laugh about it now, right dear? <laughs> We're just kind of skirting our way around the edge of the mountain here over to the overlook. See the trail is pretty rocky and up and down and some places I'm not sure who's the one that thinks the steps are the right size but they're made for giants. Not short people. Well, there's a few people up here on the overlook. And just kind of go across here. Okay, so you can see that window over there for the tunnel. Uh, that window there is right above the last repel that you do to drop down into this canyon. Once you've done that repel, then it's just a hike out all the way down and you can see the Nice road over there zigzagging back and forth. And you're just hiking down to that first loop down there at the bottom. You can kind of see the mountains there in the horizon. Pretty cool view. We brought a young men's group up here one time because it started raining. So we said, we're not doing the canyon today. So we brought them up here instead. And when you stood here on that fence, well, yeah, I guess it would be anywhere, yeah. The rain was actually coming up in our face. No, it was going straight up. It was raining yeah. up. It was coming up. I said, look, oh. it's raining up. And they're going, yeah. what? Yeah, rain was it's raining blowing. up because the wind was blowing it, coming up the canyon and just blowing it straight up in the air. Cool. Well, okay, that's the end of the day. This has been a long day. Yes. <laughs> So, so it kind of went mm -hmm. back to some of our old stomping grounds, mm -hmm. some uh, reminiscing there. And so yeah. that was kind of fun. And so anything you want to say in our closing? Tansy, you got anything to say? Hmm? Just, I'm glad you're back home. Yeah, she goes, <laughs> I want to get down and smell stuff. Check it out. So, okay. So we had many wonderful adventures canyoneering together. And now we have many new adventures. And we had a lot of fun on this adventure today, so hopefully you enjoyed it, and we'll just uh, say our goodbyes for now. And uh, our next uh, adventure is actually going to be um, doing some things with RV Trip Wizard for you because I figured out some ways to do it on our um, phone and on our and the iPad. So I know a lot of people were kind of struggling with that, so I'm going to release a video about that, and then we'll uh, move on our way. But from here, we're actually headed up to... Um, Salt Lake to visit our kids for a couple Yay! weeks. So that'd be a lot of fun. So, but anyway, so thanks for coming along and we'll just say, we'll see you down the road and hopefully you'll be on one of our videos. If not, it'll be somewhere down the road. <laughs> okay, see ya. Bye.
So this finishes Zion National Park. Do you think people should come? Oh yes, <laughs> this is one of the wonders of the world, I think. Yeah, Everybody so. should see it. Everybody should see it. It's uh, definitely worth your time. And I would, you know, if you can, make it a couple day trip at least. Yes. Um, multiple day because if you only can come in for a couple hours in the afternoon, that's when everyone else is leaving. It makes it a lot nicer in the park itself. Mm -hmm.